Welcome to ZCast, everyone. I'm Zias Caraval from ZK Research, and I'm here in the San Jose Convention Center at F5's App World, and I'm joined by Lorna McVitie. Uh, Lori, you and I have known each other a long time, all long the way time. back to your, I think, network computing days. Yes. Uh, you're now a distinguished engineer. I am, For F5, yes. I saw in the uh, office of the CTO. Mm -hmm. uh, just a quick bio on yourself. <laughs> uh, oh, I, I did that. You know, yeah, you asked a question I wasn't ready for. Let's see. Well, I've been a developer. I was obviously yeah. right, a very journalist. Very technical person. Yeah, very technical. The tech, tech, technology editor. Um, did reviews, right? And now I'm at F5 where I'm a distinguished engineer. So I do all sorts of technical things. Yeah, more and more technical mm -hmm. things. Yes. And so we're at, the, as I mentioned, we're at the App World event, mm -hmm. which is an F5 event. Mm -hmm. uh, explain what this mm -hmm. event is. Why do you hold this event? Well, we hold this event for our customers, really, and partners to bring them together. And one analyst. And one analyst. <laughs> this analyst, specifically, one analyst. Uh, to bring them together to talk about right our vision, to make sure that we can listen to them, right? We want to hear what they have to say to run things like the academy, where we actually do a lot of training, do certifications, and just share our vision and what's going on, so that they know what to expect, and so that we can figure out how to work better together to bring a better digital world to life. And, I got it right. Yeah, and, and tell me <laughs> a, a little bit about F5 today. I think when when you to the casual IT observer, if there is such a thing, when you say F5, a lot of people probably think load balancer or application delivery controller, but over the last mm. you know, decade or so, you've bought a bunch of companies, Nginx, Voltero, and it's quite a different company today. So how would you describe F5 today versus the one that mm. people know as that you know, load balancer? Well, I, and I think that's it, right? I mean, F5 was an ADC. It was an application networking company, really if the you will. Pioneer in this space. The pioneer, yes, but it was really it was all about application networking, right? We networked applications and did a few other things for it, but that was really the focus. And now we're really about app and API security and delivery. So that covers everything from DDoS protection to API security to OWASP wonderings. You know, we got to deal with that and just right, really securing and delivering the entire right, stack. Yeah, and I've, uh, I've often characterized F5 as the Rosetta Stone uh, between mm -hmm. application and networking, and I think more and more security, and that's been an interesting addition to the F5 portfolio as well, because mm -hmm. I think historically, when I thought of F5, you did some security things, yeah. right, SSL decryption and you know yeah. offload mm -hmm. and things like that, but now you're an actual security vendor, and so mm -hmm. is that characterization mm -hmm. fair where you're that Rosetta Stone between networking, applications, and security? Yes, I, I think yeah. that's a fair, right, very fair characterization, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so uh, we watched uh, uh, your CEO, Francois's keynote mm -hmm. this morning. Uh, I, I found it very, very engaging. He mm -hmm. talked a lot about the F5 platform enabling mm -hmm. companies to you know, usher in this digital world. So, so describe that platform. What is that F5 platform? Wow, that is a, a right, it's a, it's a place, right, if you will, right? But it's the way that we deliver all of the different delivery and security services to our customers, to make it easy for them to access in one place, to be able to control all of the different you know, enforcement uh, mechanisms, if you will, wherever they are, because we have to also deal with things like you have apps on premises, you have apps in a colo, you have apps in the cloud, you may have apps in the, you know, at, at the edge. How are we going to secure that? Well, we're going to use our whole portfolio, right? Nginx, big IP, yeah. right? But you still need to have some sort of way to control that, to see it, right? Visibility, um, and just to secure it. And that is the platform, right? It's, it's distributed cloud, right? That's what we call it, but it's yeah. really that platform for app delivery and security. Yeah, I've, I've used the term distributed cloud as well. I know some people use the term hybrid multi-cloud. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things I think that's um, a couple of, I think, uh, myths in the industry. First of all, not everything's moving to the cloud. <gasps> Right. What? Yeah. Uh, Shocking. Right? I know. I'm yeah. shocked. I, I didn't know that till yeah. today. Yeah. yeah. No. I absolutely agree. Yeah. We've seen that for years. That it's it's never been 100 percent all yeah. in. There are companies that are 100 percent all in, but there are still companies that are 100 percent all on premises. Yeah. So right, there's a gamut out there. Most people are in between. CEO of the uh, or CIO of one of the federal agencies said he'd never move anything to the cloud, but now of course well, they have. A they, now they have a cloud mandate. So, yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> things do change. And um, the other myth I think that's, uh, uh, I think people don't fully understand the gravity of is that multiple clouds and multi-cloud mm. are two vastly different things. 
Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, and so is hybrid, right? Let's. Yeah. I mean, all the words, right? Everybody has a different I yeah. idea about it, but multiple clouds, right? So you have, you have three different clouds. That's nice, right? Yeah. Multi-cloud, right? You've got applications all across there, and you might have private cloud, right? Everybody forgets about on-premise clouds having to connect too, and that makes things so complicated. I and mean, it's hard enough just doing multiple clouds, but then you do multi-cloud, and it's the complexity is just crazy. And then you throw edge in there. Shame on me for yeah, forgetting yeah. Edge, yeah. right? Yes, yes, Edge as well, right? Another environment that's not cloud, but it's not on-prem and it's not colo, it's another thing. So it's just going to make things harder. Yeah, and in, in Kara Sprague's part of the keynote, she actually talked about the uh, fireball effect. Yes. That's been created. Um, <laughs> the ball uh, of fire. <laughs> right, the ball of fire uh, of the application mm -hmm. world. So describe what that is and why wow. that matters so much. The, the ball of fire is, is basically a, a depiction of the enter, typical enterprise estate, right? They have applications in the cloud, multiple clouds. They have applications on premises and the colo, and it's all of the connections that go between them. There are APIs that connect, there are attacks, there are different threat vectors, there are different right, infrastructure, different, it's just everything, right? It's complex. There are too many tools and APIs, and people are struggling with that. Complexity is the number one frustration that people have with managing a multi-cloud estate today. And it doesn't get any simpler from here. No, well, you know, it's yeah. additive, right? We just keep Let's adding. throw AI in there. Yeah. Ooh, yet another property to manage and another set of apps and a set of new challenges. Well, certainly more data in more places adds to the complexity. Absolutely. Now, I noticed also uh, recently you announced the acquisition uh, of, of uh, WIB, right? The, Wib, the yes. API mm -hmm. uh, security company. Uh, what, is, what do they do and how do they fit into this broader F5 platform? Well, WIB is really focused on, right, the, on code quality, right? It does SAS, it does DAS, it does discovery. Um, it also does some threat insights as well into the code. Uh, At an API basement. level. At an API level, it's very focused on APIs, right? And of course, at distributed cloud, we do a lot of the runtime enforcement, we can do the API protection, right? So right, the whole notion is that they extend that, right? We can find the APIs, we can see what's wrong with them, and then we can also defend against any, anyone who might take advantage of that. So we think it's a really good thing to provide a, a full continuum of API security options to customers, right, in a easier to use cloud-based format. And how does that fit into the mm. broader, because then you have big IP, you know, which mm. is more traditional uh, ADC, you've got Nginx, which is your, um, uh, you know, really a developer tool in a lot of ways. Yeah. Uh, Voltero, yeah. Mm -hmm. which is the distributed mm. cloud platform. How does, the, mm. uh, how does the API product fit into that? How does it fit into that? Well, it's really going to find APIs anywhere, and then, you know, ultimately, we want to be able to secure them, right? To be able to say, oh, it, there's a vulnerability or this is a new API, we need to protect it. Well, if that API is on-premises, right, maybe you'd rather use a big IP to do it or an Nginx, right? Or you're in the cloud and you want to use Nginx. So we want to be able to use all of our portfolio as enforcement points for things like security policies, no matter where they are, so that we can keep every app and API secure wherever they are. So if you think of the continuum of applications uh, or of app complexity, from traditional apps to cloud, to edge, to APIs, I think it's fair to say you're the only provider that can actually deliver those app delivery services and security everywhere. Yes, I, yeah, what, did, yeah. what did Francois say in his keynote? The world's first distributed application security and delivery platform. Yeah, it's been, and, in, and it's been interesting to watch the evolution mm -hmm. of the space because you have had coin product competitors along the way they tend to get acquired and go away. So, I don't know, good luck, good planning. We're still here. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, now, uh, you brought up AI, mm -hmm. and so I'm going to throw oh, it back at you. Okay. Uh, you also mm -hmm. made an AI announcement today, mm -hmm. right? And so talk about that and how mm -hmm. F5 is using AI today. Well, I think the announcement today was mostly about the data fabric, um, and that's built, right, both using AI and to use AI to deliver insights and, and discover things. Because there's way um, too much data. Well, there, to, there yeah. is, right? No one, even if, even if you could get a handle on it, right? How, how could you analyze it, right? The, you'd have to have a, an army of analysts, right? So we're going to use AI to basically leverage the knowledge of a good analyst to figure this out. So we'll be doing that 
and of course we're exploring AI like everyone else, right? How can we integrate this into our customer support processes, into our knowledge bases? How can we help it generate configurations for all of our different products? All of those kind of tools we're, we're looking at, as well, of course, you know, the efficacy of our, our security services. And there are customers asking you actually, as they embark on their own AI deployments, how you can help with that? Um, well, not me personally. Okay. Nobody, nobody asks me anything. That's for sad. Well, if they did, you are but, distinguished. Yes, I am distinguished, so they <laughs> might ask. They'd get a distinguished answer. So, you know, you know. But if they did, really, it's you know, assessing right where you are before you jump, because a lot of people are jumping into right. They jump into a technology, and I know this is one of the questions that Cindy and I asked for our tenure of SOAS is, what do you regret from 10 years ago? The answers are right, incredible. Um, you know, including things like IoT. Ah, people regret that, right, in investing in that. So you don't want to look back and, and regret investing in AI 10 years from now because you didn't really consider what are you going to use it for, what's the business case, how do I set up an infrastructure that's going to be able to support it. So really that's my advice is like, why do you want to use AI in the first place, right? Are you, and, and are you ready to? And I think those are very important And do customers questions. know in general what they mm -hmm. want to use it for? Um, they have, I think. Or is it because they read about it in the magazine? <laughs> I, I think. Or something I wrote. Well, no, something you wrote. Yeah, they <laughs> stop telling them to do that. <laughs> yes. um, I, I think a lot of them have a general idea. They want to use it for security. They want to use it to mine right their line of business data. Yeah. They want to use it to do automation. That is huge. Automation is yeah. like the number one use case. In fact, I'll put a stat mm -hmm. on the screen. Mm -hmm. uh, when I look at the use of ADCs today, the number one thing mm -hmm. people are looking for is automation. Automation, yeah. see, I, and, I love that. And it's hard to yeah. automate without AI, I think. It, it really is, right? Because it's going to be able to right, deal with the complexity that's inherent from just a heterogeneous environment, right? You yeah. got different, too many things, right? Too many things, too many APIs. How do I do that? Well, AI is going to help with that. So I think it's going to be huge. Also that data that we were talking about, right? That it's got to drive the automation, right? There's got to be a reason to change and that's usually going to come from those insights with that data, and that's why right, the data fabric is so foundational for us, is we need to have that before we can make any kind of recommendations about what to deploy where, or how to deploy it, or what's the best configuration. So one last question, and I, I didn't prep on this, so I'm curious to see how she's going to answer. Okay. When I think of all the areas that F5 touches, from the mobile device, to APIs, uh, you know, for a company that really was born in the data center, how do you keep customers appraised on all the innovation that's happening? Because it, it is something I think customers struggle with is the, the rate of innovations from vendors like yourself is accelerating. Their ability mm -hmm. to digest yeah. isn't accelerating. Right. And so it right. creates a situation where, like we have in IT right now, where there's a bit of an air gap where people bought stuff and they can't mm -hmm. deploy. And so obviously you don't want to slow down innovation, but how, how, do, how should, I'll change the question a little. How should customers how can they best keep up with what's going on? Wow, I think there's multiple ways, right? At least for F5, a lot of our customers have like an account manager they can reach out to and set up like just regular talks, right? Yeah. Go out for coffee, right? Go out, go out and have a discussion about it. Other one, it's, it's email. Right, and other one, right, we write, right? We write blogs, we yeah. write, you know, LinkedIn, we do we do all of things on social media, you know, checking in is a good way to just say, oh, oh, that's something new. Because we try not to overwhelm uh, customers with too many communications, because what happened in the technology world, right, we started doing releases, like, you know, people are doing it every day. They're like, yeah. new release, new release. You're overwhelming well, as people. As soon as the cloud came, you figured out you could do that. Right, yeah, <laughs> we, we were like, oh, we can, so we will. Yeah. But it's, it's overwhelming, it becomes noise. Yeah. So, right, we're trying to be very deliberate and thoughtful about how we communicate, and we do want to communicate important right, changes or new things that are happening, but we also want to give people kind of a, you know, on demand, right? Hey, you could read this blog or you can, you know, follow something on LinkedIn and you'll hear about it that way so that, right, they're not getting overwhelmed with all this information that right, may or may not be, you know, that important to them. Yeah. All right, Lori. Anything else you want to add about the show? Uh, no, it's it's been great. You know, I'm glad to see that they, you know, let the one analyst yeah, in. Yeah. So, you know, represent there. Next and, year they might have two. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Double, right? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so. Yeah. No, but I really great. enjoyed the keynotes. I thought it was a, one of the things I liked about it was uh, mm -hmm. uh, it was very visionary. It wasn't just product. I go to a lot yeah. of vendor mm -hmm. events now where the, as soon as this keynote starts, you get into product demos. And while there were some, I thought mm -hmm. Francois spent a lot of time talking about the future of applications mm -hmm. and why the world's getting more complicated and then how F5 can help simplify the complexity. 
Excellent. So, so. All right, awesome. so on behalf of Lauren McVitie, I'm Zias Caravalli, say thanks for watching. Uh, please hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on my next episode of ZCast.